Hello viewers, welcome to K-Diagnostics, Dio here. Today we have a 2011 VW Jetta with a 2.0 liter. The customer complaint on this vehicle is the vehicle is losing power tremendously. The customer also stated that the check engine light remains on on the dash while the engine is running. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go inside the vehicle and confirm the customer's complaint. After confirming the customer's complaint, we're going to connect a scan tool to the vehicle to see what kind of trouble codes we have in the engine computer. After we retrieve the trouble codes, then we're going to talk about what directions we're going to go so we can fix whatever that's causing this vehicle to lose power. So now let's go inside the vehicle. So as you can hear, the engine is running and the check engine light remained on. So check this out. So right here, check engine light remains on and the glow plug light is blinking. And we also have the tire pressure monitor light that's staying on, on the dash. Okay. So right there, check engine light remains on. So customer's complaint confirmed. All right, so I'm gonna turn off the engine I'm going to turn the key back on. So now I'm going to bring up our scan tool so we can scan the engine computer. I'm sorry for the glare guys. The scan tool has identified the vehicle already. Let's do a standalone diagnostics. So we have four trouble codes in the engine computer. The first trouble code is P2564 and it says passive slash sporadic and the description here says turbocharger boost control position sensor circuit low. So it looks like there's something wrong in the sensor circuit that senses the position of the actuator that actuates the vanes on the turbocharger and then the second trouble code is P1570 and it says engine control module ECM disabled that's weird because if the ECM is disabled how in the world is it starting because the the engine runs now the third trouble code is P0544 and it says exhaust gas temperature sensor circuit bank 1 upper limit exceeded and the fourth one says the same thing just like the third one so exhaust gas temperature sensor circuit bank one and the last one is P026A charge air cooler efficiency below threshold now the complaint on this vehicle is the vehicle is losing power and the check engine light is on so now what I'm gonna do is we're going to graph the exhaust temperature sensor data pids and we're also going to graph the boost pressure data pid also. The actual versus the desired boost pressure data pid. Okay, now before we do that, I already took a picture of all these trouble codes. I am going to erase all these trouble codes and see which trouble code comes back first while we're sitting here on the driver's seat whichever trouble code that comes back first will be the code that we're gonna attack okay if no trouble codes come back we're gonna lower the vehicle and test drive it to see which code will come back first okay now I'm gonna erase the trouble codes so let's do erase trouble codes now I already took a picture of all these codes so I already know what we have in case they don't come back I can still continue my diagnosis process okay so right now we don't have any trouble codes so I am going to cycle the key and start the engine so as you can see the check engine light went off our glow plug light is still blinking so I'm gonna turn off the engine I'm gonna turn the key back on so let's go 
let's go to data actually before we go to live data let's go back to trouble codes so no fault codes present let's go to live data so let's click on advanced measure value so I want to graph the boost pressure and my exhaust temperature sensor data pins so let's grab engine speed coolant temperature so at this point I'm gonna select all the data pins that will be relevant to us to fix the problem that we have so let's go to boost pressure actual boost pressure specified so this is desired actual versus desired some of these data pids are redundant here they are, some of them are listed twice like this coolant temperature I already selected this but there's another one listed so as I'm scrolling down this list of data pids one data pid over here stands out to me look at this data pid over here temperature prior to turbocharger so this is the temperature sensor before the turbocharger look at the value of it this sensor is showing 1700 degrees Fahrenheit now is this sensor bad remember we had a temperature sensor code in memory this sensor over here is most likely bad or maybe the scan tool is lying to us so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna select all these temperature sensor data pids so temperature sensor before the turbocharger temperature sensor before the DPF and temperature sensor after the DPF okay now we started the engine not for too long and all these temperature sensors should be within 10% of each other okay as you can see they are all reading a value close to each other but look at this one over here this one is way off this is way high okay now since this vehicle is losing power this temperature over here prior to the turbo being too high can cause this vehicle to lose power because if we have a defective sensor that's sending a skewed signal to the computer the computer will interpret this as a problem in the exhaust system what it's gonna do is it's gonna reduce the power it can reduce power by decreasing the injector pulse or by not even opening the turbo okay because the computer will think that with this temperature the exhaust system is maybe catching on fire so it's gonna take some measures to prevent any damage okay so I'm gonna attack this over here because this is definitely a problem we're gonna attack the exhaust temperature sensor trouble code first because of this reading I'm seeing here this data pid over here this value is way high and this can definitely cause a low power concern okay the computer can shut everything else to prevent any damage to the engine okay so we got all these PIDs selected let's keep scrolling and see if there's any other data PIDs that are relevant to us so that's all now I'm gonna list all the data PIDs that we selected show all selected so here is a list of our data PIDs now our temperature sensor the engine temperature is 66.02 Fahrenheit and let's scroll down now let's pay attention we're gonna focus on these sensors over here okay temperature sensor prior to turbocharger okay this is too much now what I'm gonna do is let's take this for a spin let's go on a quick test drive and see how this vehicle is gonna drive we're gonna come back here to the shop to see what kind of trouble codes 
that will come back first and after that I will tell you what we're gonna do next so I'm gonna start the engine so right off the bat the check engine light is now staying on so which is good maybe we don't have to take this for a test drive actually let's go back to trouble codes and see what trouble code came back first that's weird because the check engine light is staying on but we don't have any trouble codes yet all right so actually change of plans guys change of plans before we go on a test drive here's what i'm gonna do so since we have that one sensor that's reading really really high i'm going to select my temperature sensors first okay so i got these let me just show the selected ones so i'm going to graph I'm gonna graph this data feed over here. This one that's showing really high. And I'm also gonna graph the data feed of the temperature sensor at the inlet of the DPF. So it's this one over here, temperature prior to particulate filter. Okay. So these two over here should basically be reading the same value this should be showing us the same value or close to the same value okay so this is what i'm gonna do i'm going to turn off the engine i'm gonna turn the key back on we definitely have a problem here let's go under the hood and find this sensor okay this temperature sensor before the turbo let's find it and disconnect it after disconnecting it this temperature over here should drop down to very cold like minus 40 degrees if it drops down that will tell me that the wiring of the sensor is good and the problem will most likely be just the sensor itself and if the sensor is bad i'm gonna fix this first i'm going to replace the sensor and after that we're gonna test drive it to see how it's gonna drive after we replace the sensor okay so now let's go under the hood and find this sensor. I'm going to remove the engine cover. So here's what we got. So this first connector over here, this orange connector, is the connector for the temperature sensor before the DPF. As you can see on the speed over here, temperature prior to DPF, we are reading 129.2 Fahrenheit. So if I disconnect this, let me see if I can do this one-handed. So I'm gonna disconnect this connector. So that's disconnected, so watch the scan tool. Okay, so our temperature went up on the temperature of the sensor before the DPF. So now this one is reading 17006 like the first one. So now let's reconnect this. Now watch what's going to happen as I reconnect it. As I reconnect it, our temperature drops. So this sensor is good, the circuit here is good too. Now, which one is this one? So I am going to, I'm gonna disconnect this sensor now. Watch what happens. Okay, so this is how you find the sensor you are looking for or the sensor you're disconnecting if you don't know the location of the sensor. So this one is the temperature sensor after the DPF because after disconnecting it, now this one is reading a high temperature. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna reconnect it. Watch that. You see that? Our temperature just dropped. So this one over here is 
for the sensor before the DPF and this one is for the sensor after the DPF. And the one that's not working is this one over here before the turbo. Since we have three electrical connectors over here for temperature sensors, so we know these ones are working. We have one left, which is the black one. Okay, so the black one over here, I believe, is the one for the temperature sensor before the turbo. So I already disconnected it. Okay, so it's disconnected. Let's look at the scan tool. Nothing's happening. Okay, we're still reading 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna reconnect it. As you can see, it's reconnected. And let's look at our data PID. So nothing changed. We are still reading 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. So this over here can be caused by usually two things, a bad sensor or an open in the wiring between the sensor and the computer. Or the worst case scenario would be a bad computer. But I don't think we have a bad computer. So now what I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure that our problem is not in the wiring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect this electrical connector. I'm gonna get a test light. We are going to basically bypass the sensor with the test light. When we put the test light across these two pins over here on the electrical connector, if the wiring is good from this point all the way to the computer, our voltage, I mean our temperature on the scan tool should drop. If the temperature on the scan tool drops after putting the test light across these two terminals over here, that will tell me that the wiring is good and at that point the problem will be a bad sensor. Okay, I'm going to grab a test light so we can test the sensor wiring. We're going to use this test light to test the wiring of the sensor before the turbo. Now here is the connector on the harness side. I'm not going to front probe it, we're going to back probe it. So I'm going to use my back probing tools over here. We're going to back probe the first wire. Now we're going to back probe the second one. So basically what I'm doing is I'm putting a test light in series with these two wires over here. Now I'm going to use these jumper wires. So this jumper wire is going to go to this side of the test light. And then I have another jumper wire over here that's going to go to this side. It's going to go to this side of my back probing tool. And then it's going to go to this side of test light. Okay. Now, look at the scan tool right now. As you can see, our first temperature sensor is still showing 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. So now I'm going to connect this jumper wire here. If our sensor circuit is good, the temperature on the scan tool should drop. So I'm going to touch these together. Let's see. Let's make sure we're making a good connection here. Okay, so right there. So this got disconnected. You see how we can drive the temperature down now? So I'm going to touch this jumper wire to my test light. So watch that. You see now we're reading minus 54 degrees, okay? So this tells me that our circuit is good. Okay, right there. Now I'm gonna disconnect this. If I disconnect it, our temperature is gonna go back high. So watch this. I'm gonna disconnect it. 
our temperature went back to 1700 degrees. Okay. Yes, yeah, so right there. Okay. So, since we are able to drop this temperature down, that tells me that our wiring from the sensor all the way back to the computer is good. So, there's a 5 volt uh, reference voltage that the computer sends down this wire and when the temperature sensor gets hot, the resistance in the sensor changes which drops that voltage close to ground and as the voltage drops the computer interprets that voltage reading to a certain temperature that's programmed in the engine computer so what we were doing is we were just pulling that voltage that's on one wire to ground okay to the ground that's on the other wire okay so I know our problem is the sensor. Since this vehicle is losing power, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on this sensor problem first, okay? Let's forget about the uh, boost code that we had about the turbo. I'm going to follow the wire of this sensor. So the wire is right over here. Where is it? So this one. So I'm gonna follow it. It looks like it's going down down somewhere so we're gonna follow yeah so here's the wire I'm going to follow it I'm gonna follow this wire and remove the sensor after I remove the sensor I'm gonna order another sensor we're gonna replace the sensor first because we know for sure that this sensor is not working because right now if I reconnect it our voltage will still be high Okay, I'm gonna get the sensor ordered. After I get the sensor, we're gonna install a new sensor. And after we install the new sensor, we're gonna take this on a test drive to see how it drives after that. If it drives well, this will be the only problem. But if it doesn't drive well, we're gonna go after the low boost trouble code that we had, okay? So right now I reconnected the sensor. Check out the scan tool it's still showing 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. So the sensor over here is open, okay? So I'm gonna remove the sensor. I'm gonna do that off camera. After I remove the sensor, I will bring you guys back up once I get the new sensor so we can install it, okay? So I will do that off camera and then I'll bring you guys back up. So I did order a new exhaust temperature sensor from the VW dealership. And here is the part number and I wanted to note that this is one of the worst exhaust temperature sensor that I've ever replaced because this exhaust temperature sensor here before the turbo is at a very very bad location so I have to remove all these components to get to it and to get to this sensor you have to get to it from underneath the vehicle and the drive axle had to come out to get to this sensor. And I removed all these things over here, the air filter box, the battery, the air filter box tube, to get to the clips that were holding the sensor wire along the turbocharger, okay? Now, the sensor harness is down over here. I hope you can see it. So right here this guy so now I'm, I'm gonna feed it down all the way to the bottom of the engine so that we can go below the vehicle and get it out I have already undone the exhaust temperature sensor and everything else underneath is already removed so we can get access to the sensor but I wanted to show you how crazy it is to remove this sensor so let me show you the new one in the box so here is the new one okay this is what we're gonna install this is our black connector okay so now let's go under the vehicle so we can remove the old sensor after that we're gonna install this new sensor we are here under the vehicle let me show you all the components 
that we had to remove so we can get to the sensor. You see that drive axle and that EGR tube over there? We had to remove all these components to access the sensor. So now we're gonna remove the sensor. Now, this, now the sensor itself is right over here. I had already undone the sensor off camera. I just wanna show you how crazy it is to remove it. Okay. So here it is. Now I'm gonna remove it. So here is our old sensor. So here is the old one. Okay, as you can see, it looks like the brand new one that we have over here. Okay, so this is the new sensor and this is the old one. Okay, so now I'm gonna install this sensor. After I get everything installed and put back together, I'm gonna bring you guys back up so we can erase the trouble codes. And after that, we're gonna take this vehicle for a test drive, okay? I wanted to show you this new exhaust temperature sensor one more time before I continue. So I got the new one installed. Let me see if I can get a better angle here. So here is the new one. Okay, so right here, this is the new sensor. Okay, and here is the old one. Okay, so I got the new one installed. Here it is. It's way up there and it's at a very tight spot. Okay, so it was a pain to even remove. All right, so now I'm gonna put everything back together and after that, I'll bring you guys back up. I got everything back together, replacing the exhaust temperature sensor before the turbocharger on this vehicle is really, really tough. I had to remove all these components here to get to this one sensor. This over here is the old one. Okay, this is the defective one. The exhaust temp sensor before the turbo. So we got the new one installed. Everything is reconnected. We got all the electrical connectors reconnected. So we're good to go. So now let's go inside the vehicle and erase the trouble codes. After that, we're gonna test drive the vehicle. Let's just do a quick erase. Let's erase all these trouble codes. All the trouble codes are erased. We still have one trouble code in the ABS system, but we're not gonna focus on that. Our focus is on the engine computer. So let's go inside the engine control unit Let's go to trouble codes. As you can see, we don't have any trouble codes in the engine computer. So now we're gonna go to data. We're gonna graph our exhaust temperature sensor data pids. So I'm gonna select all the exhaust temperature sensor data pids. The engine is pretty cold right now. So all these sensors should basically be reporting around the same temperature. Okay, so this is the one that was showing us 1700 before. You see what it's showing us right now? Temperature prior to turbocharger, 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Actually, it's going between 64 and 53 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, all these sensors are basically giving us the same temperature, which is good. So this tells me that we have fixed the problem that we had okay at this point we're gonna take this vehicle for a test drive and see how it drives so that's all we're gonna look at right now okay suit load calculated this suit load over here is a little high 22.2 .2. we probably gonna have to do a regen afterwards Let's go drive this first and see how it drives. And then we're gonna do a regen. I don't like how this number is a little high. The measured value over here is 3.6 grams, which is still a little bit high. 
we're gonna have to do a regen and see if these numbers are going to go down so let's show our selected data pids so everything looks good so now I'm gonna start the engine so as you can see the engine is running we have the traction control light on on the dash because the vehicle is still on the lift so now I'm gonna drop off the vehicle we're gonna take this vehicle for a spin and see how it drives now as the engine is running our temperature sensor data pids over here look good okay so this exhaust temperature sensor over here before the turbo will get hotter before these ones because this is just outside the exhaust manifold okay so i'm gonna put my scan tool over here i'm gonna lower the vehicle and after that we're gonna take this for a test drive i'm gonna graph this data pit over here especially this one okay so let's go for a test drive and see what happens So as you can see, we are on the road. The vehicle drives very well. The vehicle has a lot of power. The check engine light didn't come back on. Our data pits on the scan tool look good. So we're good to go. This is fixed, guys. So the uh, defective exhaust temperature sensor was the problem. I was told that this vehicle was losing power but as I'm driving right now there is no power loss on this vehicle this vehicle has full power I know there was another trouble code about the turbocharger when we initially scanned this vehicle but I'm not gonna worry about it because the computer could have been disabling the turbo to prevent any damage to the engine because the exhaust temperature sensor was sending a skewed signal to the engine computer so when the engine computer looks at that high temperature that was re being reported by the first exhaust temperature sensor on the exhaust stream it can disable the turbo and that can also cause some other trouble codes to be set although the computer can also choose to ignore that signal and then look at the other sensors downstream from the uh, turbocharger but some computers have weird logics in them okay so I'm not gonna go after the turbocharger trouble code and that turbocharger trouble code is usually set by a leak in the induction system or a defective actuator on the turbocharger itself or it bad turbocharger I don't think we have a bad turbocharger here I believe that exhaust temperature sensor being bad was causing the other trouble code to be set as well okay so I'm gonna keep driving this is fixed I'm gonna give the vehicle back to the customer I'm gonna explain and tell him that they can potentially be a trouble code about the turbo that can come back but since the vehicle drives well and that code is not back so I'm not gonna worry about it okay so this is fixed we're good to go I'm gonna drive back to the shop once I get back to the shop I'll bring you guys back up so we can wrap up this video all right guys so we are back here at the shop as you can see the check engine light didn't come back on the vehicle is driving very well it has a lot of power so I'm gonna bring up the scan tool here so here is the temperature sensor that was defective after our test drive the temperature it's showing is 366.8 degrees so this is good now this number over here this suit load the measured value went down to 0.6 grams so which is good I was gonna do the regen if this number was gonna stay high but it went down so and based on how it drives I don't think we have a clogged DPF 
or a partially clogged DPF, if we had a lot of soot in the DPF, this vehicle was gonna be losing power. Since it drives well, our problem is not there, okay? So this is fixed, so let's check some trouble codes once again before we wrap up this video. So right there, no trouble codes. Trouble codes are not detected. So we are good to go, guys, okay? So now I'm going to turn off the engine. So I'm gonna leave it right over here, guys. I hope you liked the video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give it a thumb down. But if you do, you gotta tell me why so we can make better videos in the future. If this is your first time here, subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. If you have any comments, questions, criticism, leave them in a comment box. Thanks for watching. See you next time.